Hello everyone, I'm Vera Worthington and I'm excited to be part of this graphics collaboration with the Alcohol Ink Art community. Uh, what they did was they sent me and several other contributors some sample papers to play with and create new projects for you all. So here I have a pad of the graphics Dura Bright Black and I'm just going to take a page out of here and I have my Cricut mat here. This is the Strong Grip mat and I'm just gonna place it down on the mat, press it down so it doesn't slide off. Okay, that seems like it's really on there. And then I'm going to show you the art that I created in Adobe Illustrator and I imported into my Cricut. Now keep in mind that you don't need to have Adobe Illustrator to create this project. You can always draw on the Dura Bright Black your design and take an X-Acto knife and cut out your design manually. So I'm just showing you a quick way to use your Cricut to cut out a shape and we're gonna assemble a fun little project, okay? I'll be right back. Okay, so I just wanna say that this is not a tutorial for using a Cricut, but I am going to show you quickly the steps that you can use to cut your design out in Cricut Design Space. So here I have Cricut Design Space open and I imported my art from Adobe Illustrator. I drew all this out and I saved it as an SVG file and then I brought it into uh, my Cricut. So now I have uh, the Tree of Life set up and I'm going to go to the corner here that says make it. So now you can see it's on the mat. Okay, I'm going to click the bottom here, continue. And it says to continue, please connect your maker, which, yep, my maker is connected. So I clicked this button over here with the double arrow to load my page in. I'm sorry, I couldn't do it with one hand and uh, I tried to set up a tripod to make this easier and it wasn't working for the camera angles I needed. So um, sorry about that, but of course, you know, if you have a maker by Cricut, you know how this works. So now that my page is loaded, I'm going to choose from several different um, options here. I am going to choose medium garment leather. I know it's not leather, but this is what I found cuts the synthetic substrates like DuraBright the most easiest. So uh, note over here, I have loaded knife blade. I believe uh, the Cricut Maker is the only one, or maybe the newest one, I'm not sure, uh, uses the knife blade. Check your model and if the knife blade is compatible. So now what I need to do is press go. So I come over here and this little flashing C, I click go. And now it makes all of its little noisy noises and it will start cutting out my design. Now what happens with the knife blade is that it makes several passes. It doesn't just cut the design once, it'll cut it out four times. So the blade is going over and over the same areas so that it's cutting into the design and will get all of the design cut with four passes. So. Um, I'm gonna come back here after this is done and we'll continue with my project. I just wanted to give you a quick update. We're about 20 minutes in and we're cutting pass number two of four passes, 41% finished. So I'm guessing that total cut time is gonna be just under an hour. This definitely takes some time and see it very faintly. You can see the tree design etched into the Durabrite. So um, it 
definitely needs a few more passes and hopefully by the fourth pass it will be done. Stay tuned. Okay, so while we are waiting for the Cricut to finish cutting out that Tree of Life design, I just want to show you this Duralar. This is a translucent uh, substrate from um, Graphics, and um, it's matte, but it's, you know, it's translucent. It's not uh, transparent, and it's not opaque, so you can see through this stuff slightly. So watch what I did. I took a sheet, and I taped it to, um, you know, I just have like an old piece of uh, acrylic here. So I taped a printout of the Tree of Life here, and then I overlaid a piece of the Dural, Duralar. Yeah, Duralar. <laughs> we have Durabrite and we have Duralar. The translucent stuff is the Duralar. So um, this stuff is really great because um, you can see through it a little bit. So now I'm going to use that to my advantage and paint just where the circle of the tree is. I'm going to do a sunset. So um, come paint along with me. <laughs> I'm going to keep this really, really loose. Um, I'm going to start with yellow over here because yellow um, tends to get dirty the quickest. And then I'm going to wet my entire surface with some blending solution. So I'm going to try to work really fast because I want that blending solution to stay wet. And it looks like there was some crumbs in pink, but that's okay. We're actually going to cover a lot of that. So I have a clean brush here and I'm going to swish around the yellow so I get the lower portion of my art covered with that. Now I'm going all the way to the edges on this and then I'm going to just streak in little bits of orange here and there. So this is um, this is Valencia and this was sunshine yellow. You can use you know any orange or yellow. It doesn't have to be sunshine yellow. It doesn't have to be sunset orange use what you have and I'm going to put some gumball because that's a really pretty uh, bright pink that I just love for this. I think this is going to be really pretty here. Okay and then at the top I'm going to do more blue and I'm going to do a little more gumball maybe a touch more blue in there. Okay, let's, let's spread that around. So now when we have pink skies and we have blue, that's making, what kids? <laughs> purple, that's right, we're making purple. But I wanna keep a little bit of that blue. So I'm keeping this really wet and really loose and I'm going to add just a little bit more blue over here and over here. I don't want the blue to get completely lost. I want the blue to show in some spots. I'm just gonna rinse my brush. Okay, so I want some blue here. I think my brush was too wet because now it's pushing the blue out of the way. I'll just add a little bit more in there. Yeah. So I'm blotting my brush a little bit more so I can go back in and blend. Now, like I said, I'm just keeping it fun and loose. And if I just wiggle my brush around, it looks like little clouds and little shadows in the, in the sky. Kind of cool. Okay, so I think that's looking really, really beautiful. I want to 
see if we can blend this out a tiny bit without, no, without disturbing stuff, of course not. Okay, there we go. Got a little more of that back in. And I'm just wiggling my brush around because I really want this to look like clouds in the sky and just rinsing my brush out and I'm going to put a little bit of pink right onto the tip of my brush. That's a little trick I like to do so I don't have to get out a weld palette and I can control how much ink is coming out. Okay, I think that's looking really, really fun and really beautiful. And now, across the bottom here, I'm just going to add in some green. That's kind of the land. Looks like we lost a lot of the yellow, but that's okay. I'm using Everglades here, in case you're wondering which green I'm using. to get some grass going here. It's a little bit wet there. I'm going to try to dry that off a tad. I'm just lifting the ink off. Bring this green all the way down to the bottom here. And I'm even going to go beyond the circle a little. And I'm just doing a little indication of maybe some grass, a little foliage, just quick and loose and fun. And just a little bit on the tip of my brush. Ah, I hate when that happens, don't you hate that? This is why I always tell people to pour the bottle away from your art. I just broke my own rule trying to be quick. Oh well. <laughs> that happens. Okay, so I have a few lighter areas in the front here where the roots of the tree are. rinse out my brush again and rinse that a little better. And I'm going to dab just a tiny, tiny bit of orange to the tip of my brush and I'm going to blot it. See, everything is fixable with alcohol inks. Get some drops in the sky and eh, no big deal brush them right out. See that? And now maybe my clouds look even more interesting. I don't know. Maybe not. <laughs> Get rid of that little drop there. we're doing this, while we're dotting and dabbing in colors, I'm going to just dot and dab in just a smidge, 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 smidge more of the yellow. Again, just touch the tip of my bottle to the tip 
of my bristles. Uh, yeah, here we go. We need more yellow in here, didn't we? I thought so. Using very light touches. Okay, I think that's looking kind of fun and uh, translucent. So what I'm going to do is spray seal this and then I'm going to show you the next step in this. It's so exciting, hang with me. Oh, and by the way, for those of you that are kind of new to alcohol ink painting, um, I did mention that I'm going to spray seal this. So what I'm going to do is three coats of Kmar varnish, and then I'm going to spray like four or five coats of an archival UV protectant. Krylon makes a good one, and so does Golden. And they also come in matte and gloss finishes. I think Golden has semi-gloss and satin finish, which I happen to love the satin finish. But for this project, I want it to be glossy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And when I come back, we'll assemble this thing. Hang on. Okay, so my cut is finished and it says check your cut. So I am going to go over here and I am going to gently lift this corner. Ah, look at that. Wow, it looks like it cut all the way. This is exciting. Okay, let's see if Yep, looks like a cut all the way. So I am going to click this button to unload the mat. And I am going to move it over here and I am going to peel this away. Uh, let's, I'm gonna put the camera in the overhead tripod. I'll be right back. Okay, so I am going to do my best to peel this all away. I might even speed that up so you don't have to sit through all of this. Let's see if I can peel it off in one piece. Maybe I could do that. Let's see. Weeding or removing the excess pieces of the Duralar takes time. So instead of watching me for three and a half minutes, I fast forwarded. Okay, so there is my Tree of Life silhouette. I think it came out pretty gosh darn good. I really love how this is looking. Okay, so that worked. <laughs> you know, you try new things and you don't always know if they're going to work. So, okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I have this stuff called Artist Tech. And this is also um, by Graphics. This is another product that they gave us to try out. Um, called Artist Tech. Uh, the 25 sheets, five and a half by nine. So um, I'm going to go ahead and use this on the back of this. So, hmm. Okay, so I will peel away the backing. I think you're only supposed to expose what you're going to use, but it looks like I'm going to need the whole sheet. So I'm going to stick this down. This is sticky side up. And I'm just laying my design on there. And then I'm going to take that adhesive 
and rub it everywhere. I'm gonna rub it really good so that it sticks to the back of my tree of life. So that way I can stick this design onto the front of my artwork. Okay. So let's see, uh, I think I'm gonna do the other side first before I peel this away. So let's peel up this one now. Okay, so this is the sticky side here. on the back of this now and just line that up against the other one and then again I will cover this I don't know which side to use I think it's this side and I'm gonna press very firmly because I want to lift up that adhesive. Okay, I just want to burnish everything down. And since the adhesive is on this side, I'm going to rub it from the back so that I know that adhesive is really stuck well on there. Okay, so this is the first side. I'm peeling this off. Oh, I can see. Oh, this is so neat. I can see all these little adhesive dots stuck to the back of the Dura Bright Black. Can you see the little dots? How cool is that? Okay, so now I'm going to peel away the other side. This is so neat. Okay, I like this. Okay, so right now I have adhesive side up and I'm going to take my art. Let's throw that in the center so you can see it. Now, I am going to line this up as best as I can. Ah, I don't want it stuck down yet. Hang on. Oh gosh, things like this make me nervous, especially because I'm videoing this for you. <laughs> okay. It looks like I got a little bit of adhesive on this side, but I think what I'm going to do is give it another coat of clear um, spray sealant. And it looks like um, this is a tiny bit shorter than nine inches. I can always just, um, cut a little slice of paper if I need to cover that. In fact, I'll do that very quickly now, but we might not need it. We're gonna put it into the frame and see if we need it. There we go. There's just a little strip of I think I need some adhesive though. Okay. I think there is still some on here. Yeah, there's still some on here. I'm going to use that one. And I'm going to rub it down real good. And then I'm going to peel it up. So now I have all the sticky dots on that side. Okay. And I'm 
I'm just going to stick it down. Yeah, just stick it on that edge for now. Okay. So I think that's going to look kind of good. I want to give you a little idea of what I'm going to do with this. Um, Okay, so now what I have here is a shadow box frame that's nine by nine inches. And what I did was I taped fairy lights all over this. So check this out. I'm gonna turn it on. I have the little switches here. And later I'll like permanently glue these to the back. But look at that little fairy lights how fun is that now watch what i'm going to do with this are you ready i know this is the moment you've all been waiting for i'm taking out this little spacer and i'm taking out the plexiglass here in the front and what i'm going to do is i'm putting the artwork in the front behind the plexiglass and then I'm going to take the little spacer and then I'm going to put the back on, fold these little guys down and ready for the big reveal. Okay, now watch this. I'm going to turn the light out and you'll see I have a cute little glow from the back little shadow box how fun is that <laughs> so for this project I just wanted to show you how you can use translucent Duralar to backlight it of course you know make sure you spray seal it and all that um, and then you can cut out a piece of the Durabrite black to use over it to block out some areas that you don't want showing so isn't that cute? It's a fun little project. I hope you enjoyed everything that I had to show you today, and I hope you can use my project in an inspiring way to make something of your very own. Thanks for joining me. Bye. Thanks so much for watching today. If you've enjoyed my presentation, please follow me on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok on all four social media platforms, I'm Worthington Fine Art. Please also check out my website, VeraWorthington.com. Thanks so much. Bye.